What has it been like? Uh, you've you've owned X for a year now. Oh yeah. Do, do you do you ever wake up in the middle of the night and have a dream that you didn't do it? <laughs> And your life is infinitely easier? Well, it's certainly um, a recipe for trouble, I suppose, or contention. Um, what was it ultimately that led you to make the decision to do it? I mean, this is going to sound uh, somewhat melodramatic, but I was worried about that, that it was having a corrosive effect on civilization. Uh, that it was uh, just having a bad, a bad impact, um, and um, I think part of it is that it, it's where it's where it was located, which is uh, you know downtown San Francisco. Um, and while I, I think San Francisco is a beautiful city, and and we should really fight hard to um, kind of right the ship of San Francisco. If you've walked around downtown San Francisco, right near the X F K Twitter headquarters. It's a zombie apocalypse. I mean, it's rough. Have you have you been been in that area? Not lately. No, yeah. I've heard. It's crazy. I've heard it's crazy. I've heard you you really can't believe it until you actually go there. You can't believe it until you go there. So now you have to say, well, what philosophy led to that outcome? And that philosophy was being piped to Earth. So um, you know, a philosophy that would be ordinarily quite niche and geographically constrained. So the, de- the sort of the fallout uh, area would be limited. Um, was effectively given an information, a weapon, um, a te- uh, inf- information technology weapon to propagate uh, what is essentially a mind virus to the rest of Earth. Um, and the outcome of that mind virus is very clear if you walk around the streets of downtown San Francisco. It is the end of civilization. And it's not just uh, propagating the mind virus, but suppressing any opposing viewpoints. Yes. Well, in order for the virus to propagate, it must suppress opposing viewpoints. So, because it doesn't stand up to scrutiny. Correct. Yeah. I mean, you, you've, I mean, you've, you, you, you've, you've felt the, the virus. You know? Yeah. Yeah. People have tried to cancel you so many times. Yeah, it's fascinating. Yeah. Um, I don't think you're melodramatic at all. I, I I think it's a, it's a, I mean I don't want to be melodramatic, but it's almost like a death cult. It's a death cult. No, it, no, it, it, that is exactly right. Um, it, it, uh, it it's essentially the uh, extinctionists. Like it's in the limit. It is that they're propagating uh, the extinction of humanity and civilization. Um, and, and there's some people who are, are like most most of the time it, it's it's implicit. They don't ex- expl- it's, but sometimes it's explicit. Like there was a guy on the front page of the New York Times uh, who literally has the thing called the extinctionist movement, um, and he was quoted on the front page of the New York Times as saying, uh, "There are eight billion people on the world, but it would be better if there were none." Ooh. And I'm like, "Well, buddy, you can start with yourself." Yeah. Um, Does he have friends? That's what always fascinates me. <laughs> well, here he is. That guy. Uh, he looks like you not long for this earth. I mean, he doesn't he's not voluntary young. human extinction movement? That's hilarious. Pe- pe- spent. De- I'd like to party with that dude. Okay. I would just like to like. That's yeah. the, that's 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 the, de- that's the that's an explicit version of the death cult. Yeah, maybe the extinction live long cult. and die out. It's. Like, I mean, it's it's not. Uh, extinction is a word he uses. Yes. No, I mean, it's not a. It's literally a self description. Did that, they cover that him death cult was in charge of in social, in social media, yeah, and still largely is at uh, Google and Facebook, by the way. Yeah. So yeah. I'm like, uh, I'm not in favor of uh, human extinction. Uh, they are, and uh, they can go to hell. Well, that guy is. Yeah, he can go to hell. That guy seems silly. I, uh, I would well, like to hang out with him, though. I would like to find out what makes him tick. I bet that guy is fascinating. Well, if you get them so, alone for a few days. I mean, and I, I, I'm dig in favor in. of. I mean, I'm pro environment, but the the, the, the in the limit, uh, if you go if if you take environmentalism to an extreme, you start to view humanity as a plague on the surface of the earth, like a like a mold or something. Right. Um, and but it's, it's this is actually false. Uh, the earth could could take probably ten times the the current civilization. The, the population could be you could ten x the population without uh, destroying the rainforest. So the the, the 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 environmental movement, and I'm an environmentalist, uh, has gone too far. 
they've gone way too far. Um, you know, if, if you if you start thinking that that humans are bad, then the natural conclusion is humans uh, should die out. Now, I'm headed to an AI safety international sort of AI safety conference uh, later tonight, leaving in about three hours, um, and um, I don't know, meet with the British Prime Minister and a number of other people. Um, so you have to say like. How could AI go wrong? Well, if, if, if AI gets programmed by the extinctionists, it will, its utility function will be the extinction of humanity. Elon Musk's acquisition of Twitter brought about several significant changes to the platform. Firstly, Musk emphasized the integration of advanced AI technologies to combat misinformation and enhance content moderation. Musk introduced a revamped user interface, focusing on improved accessibility and user experience. In terms of functionality, Musk implemented innovative tools for seamless crypto transactions directly on the platform, making it easier for users to engage in cryptocurrency trading and transactions within the Twitter ecosystem. In response to growing concerns about misinformation and controversial content, Musk introduced stricter content moderation policies. These policies have stirred up debates about the balance between freedom of speech and the responsibility of a social media platform in regulating harmful content. In conclusion, Elon Musk's influence on Twitter has ushered in a series of significant changes that have stirred both excitement and controversy within the online community. The long-term impact of these alterations remains to be seen as discussions persist about their potential implications for user privacy, freedom of speech, and the future landscape of social media.